Hello there. Welcome to our first video uh, going through kind of introductory knowledge about what League Trailblazers might have in store for us. So we're S'more Games Board. I'm Danny. And I'm Nick. And today we're just going to go through all the quests that we should be able to accomplish in Mistelin. If you didn't see the uh, the Twitter post, uh, basically Varak, Lumbridge, Draenor, and the dig site area, as well as a little bit east of Varak, um, we think the sawmill's in there. It looks like it because there's a sawmill-looking icon, but definitely, uh, definitely no priest in peril, it doesn't look like. So, yeah, this should be a compilation of everything you need for the quests, all the rewards, and we'll discuss any thoughts we have. So, um, just to start off, I'm thinking I'm going to go the production route, uh, just to make things a little more efficient when I start getting my supplies stacked up. Uh, Nick, you're kind of thinking between the other two, right? Yeah, I'm thinking between the first and third relic. I think uh, we'll probably have a relic video coming up sometime next week. Um, yeah. So that's something we could uh, look out for. Yep. So we're probably purposefully going to choose different ones just to see how they work out this season. But So let's start off. Uh, look at this beautiful quest. Everyone's first quest. So Cook's Assistant, pretty straightforward here. 300 cooking XP. Remember, everything is going to be multiplied by 5, so that's really 1,500. That should get you to level 10. I don't think it'll be quite 11, but at least level 10. Um, and you'll get the Chef's Range. So those are the required items. Bucket of milk, eggs, flour. Uh, at some point, we'll do a walkthrough video where we actually collect all this stuff before the season actually starts. So everyone's favorite quest there. Yeah, Ernest going the back to... Uh... Yeah. Going back to Cook's assistance there, um, some of those items might be a little bit uh, tricky to get on the first couple of days. Namely uh, the eggs. Yeah, the eggs. Uh, there's a few spawns in um, Mistolin that you can go to mostly around uh, Lumbridge. I believe there is one in uh, Xanaris, which we also should have unlocked by the chicken uh, shrine. Yeah, and you start um, with the Draymon staff in your inventory, so you should be able to just head right down there. Yeah, so that'll, that'll be interesting. And now I, I do think uh, eggs can also be spawned by chickens that are poisoned. So that might be something looking into as well. Ah, as close to a literal Easter egg as we can get, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so then we've got Ernest the chicken, talking about more chickens now. Uh, so anything you see in green here really has no requirements. You'd pretty much be able to jump off of Tutorial Island and do it. But Ernest the Chicken, the most annoying thing about this quest is going to be all the stuff you have to pick up. For example, the poison and I think the fish food. Um, the spade, there's just a spawn you'll be able to grab. If you can't get the spade, try to world hop. It's in Draenor Castle. I say all available during quest, but these are all items you'll have to pick up. So it might not be the fastest. But if you wait a day, it'll... I mean, it's just as easy as following the quest guide then. But if you're racing against all the streamers as soon as it comes out, you might have a hard time. Um, alternative rewards, the Killer Watts. The only reason I'm listing this, because they are awful if you've never tried to kill them. The Nature Rune drops, they have a fairly common drop of 8 Nature Runes. And normally, on an Iron Man, if you were that concerned with Nature Runes, you would hurry up and get... Uh, fairy Tale Part 1 complete so you can use Fairy Rings, but we're not going to have that option because we won't be able to get Nature Spirit done. So, four quest points. It's quite a bit of quest points, and then 300 coins. I don't think there's too much other about this quest besides, again, the issue with picking stuff up off the ground. So, me and Nick both have early memories of this quest. Back when, uh, what did we use? Rune HQ, Nick? <laughs> I don't know. That was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah we, but we figuring out things. Yeah, figuring out that door puzzle in the basement at first, <laughs> and we were scared of that skeleton in the in the middle closet where you got that tube. So that'll bring back some memories. Only ever have to do it once on an account, so we don't spend too much time down there. All right, mystical and mystery. Um, so this is one Nick told me about. I it didn't even really cross my mind at first, but uh. There's actually some pretty useful rewards here. Unfortunately, it doesn't go up to a diamond, but... Um, yeah, anything you can think of with the gems to do, Nick? I mean, sapphires, you might want to make a games necklace early, but where can you really go with it? I don't know. Good things to hold on to, though, right? Yeah, I mean, a ring of recoil might be able to help uh, with some quests, too. Uh, that extra damage that uh, you return to the 
boss attacking you. So that might be an interesting thing to make there. Yeah, um, some of the other amulets, like a amulet of strength, if you get your crafting a magic level high enough, would be interesting. Um, I wouldn't really recommend the Ring of Forging because I believe those can be f uh, bought in Xanaris. Um, yeah, Ruby but, Rings. Yeah. So that would probably be one where I would uh, would stay away from for the ruby. Yeah, and something Nick pointed out, uh, you don't get a knife when you start off of Tutorial Island. This quest, you can get one without having to worry about buying or waiting for spawns. So if you are one of those people jumping right out of the gate, if you hurry up and do Mistle and Mystery, you'll get that for yourself. Get some fletching out of the way early. But also the 600 crafting experience, that turns into 3,000 crafting experience, so... It'll get you a nice little jump start. You won't have to start with your cow hides. <laughs> Restless Ghost. Um, I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. There aren't even item requirements for this quest. Uh, it is, if you are going to choose Mauritania, which might be my first area. We'll talk about areas and our ideas later, but... Um, Restless Ghost is kind of a starter for a lot of the Mauritania quests, especially that Priest in Peril... That'll get you a couple of the basic requirements for almost everything over there. But yeah, that prayer experience, that's a biggie, right? Another thing about this quest is uh, Wizard's Tower is used for quite a big amount of quests for the free-to-play area. So uh, you could easily do this when you're doing other quests because it would be basically on the way. Um, we'll talk more about what quests to do together uh later on um yeah but there are video. yeah there's there's a lot of quests that overlap and this would that would be a good opportunity to do this one when you're going to wizard's tower anyways mm -hmm. romeo and juliet this is just walking left and right cadaver berries might be a pain uh i think there's only two bushes and i think they have three berries each on them and they take a little while to respawn but get your five quest points Moving along to Rune Mysteries, here's another Wizard's Tower quest. So, uh, this is one I don't know as much about, um, the drop trick with the air talismans, but... Nick, why would an Iron Man want to do that? Um, I saw some, uh, videos on it. I'm not too familiar with it myself, but all I do know is that the EXP rates for, uh, tiaras are much higher than crafting runes. So if you do choose, I believe it would be Asgarnia that has the air altar uh, south of Falador. Um, that might be something to uh, consider uh, getting quite a bit of uh, talismans to speed up the runecrafting process. And you know what? Later on, when we figure out more about the areas, we'll do some of those calculations for you too. We'll have some little videos that are just tips and tricks along the way we haven't seen a lot of these U videos on youtube yet so we figured so, no we're interested by it but the the five kudos too um the more kudos you get at some thresholds i think you get experience lamps so when you get kudos for a quest i'll put it in here as an alternative reward so the uh just a reminder that the air talismans would have to be done um right after you start the quest uh you would uh have to drop it um from what i've seen and then talk to the duke yeah. and repeat that multiple times before you complete the quest you don't get to do that afterwards he won't give you more then so all right sheep shearer purchasing shears is the only issue with this otherwise 750 crafting experience after you factor in that five times um don't accidentally attack a ram <laughs> but uh if you shear a sheep the same tick as another player you should always still get the wool. You and the other player both can. It's kind of the same thing with wood cutting and mining. It's possible when the resource is depleted, that if you deplete it on the same tick, you and another player can both get that resource. So um, it shouldn't be that awful once you get the shears. But again, if you're racing with those streamers, that's going to be the one pain in the butt. I uh, believe there is a shear spawn in Drainer Manor, which might be less contested than the ones uh, northwest of Lumbridge. So that might be something to explore if you uh, rush Ernest the Chicken Quest. Another thing we'll research for you guys as we get closer to is all those little things, just, just to avoid fighting the masses. All right, moving on to the yellow background now. This might seem like, well, what do you mean this has a requirement? But uh, as an Iron Man, we're going to need those raw sardines. So you will need five fishing. Uh, that's really all it takes. 
The only reason I put the yellow background is because this is one you can't just hop off of Tutorial Island and do, but uh, grab yourself a raw dark sardine, some dougal leaves, a hundred coins to bribe those little brats, and a bucket of milk. Please, oh please, read the quest guide for this one. Uh, if you give things to the mama cat in the sawmill in the wrong order, I think you can waste your materials. So be careful when you read the quest guide on this when we do our walkthrough. I'll do it correctly. Uh, and if I do it wrong, you'll see me do it wrong, so... <laughs> a lot of cooking experience. The chocolate cake. I think Desert Treasure is going to be auto-completed when you open the desert. That was in the blog somewhere, but uh... If not, chocolate cake's necessary for that. Stew for using the spicy stews. And raising cats. Uh, raising cats has some other benefits depending on areas you choose, but... Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to talk about uh... Um, the sardines. Um, what does the sardines require again? Is it a fishing pole? Yeah, so it should just be um, regular sea fishing. So, for example, if you go over and drain or buy all your favorite willow log cutters, uh, that area lets you bait fish lake baiting. Um, so I don't think it's river. I think it's a lake. Then again, I don't know if there's a difference. Uh, so, so this is just something we mocked together. Um, it might also be hard to get that fishing rod too, so that's a good another reason why this would be yellow. Um, because I think um, all the ports are kind of locked out, so we might have uh, trouble getting that item. Yeah, we'll have to see if there's another way to get it. Otherwise, you know, the sawmill being open is only a guess too. Uh, you might not actually be able to go that far north. You might be able to talk to the sawmill guy, but not go inside. We don't know yet, so Gertrude's cat's an up-in-the-air one. I wouldn't put money on it, but I think it's a good bet we'll be able to. Maybe there's a way to get a raw sardine without having to fish for it either, so... Yep, look out for more info on that one. Alright. Well, Nick, look, it's the Imcatch request. <laughs> Do we even need to talk about why this one's gonna be a pain? Uh, it might be a little bit annoying, but some people got lucky before. Um, I'm yeah. thinking that some people might not even complete this one, depending on their RNG through leagues. Uh, it might be hard getting imps in the first place with everybody camping them. It might not be worth it for um, the magic EXP there. Yeah, I mean, that is going to be a lot because it's going to be... Oh, what is it? That'd be 4,375. That's a pretty good chunk. So, you know, if if you're feeling lucky, or if you're on late at night when no one else is around killing those imps, um, unfortunately we don't have that Falador area, so the good spawn of them isn't really there. You'll have to find, you'll have to find your own little niche area to do that. But if you can get that Amulet of Accuracy, I bet you it's going to be your best in slot for a little while in the leagues. At least a few days before you, uh, get any kind of crafting up, or maybe you choose to use your Mystical and Mystery Ruby for a, for an Amulet of Strength. I'm probably saving mine for a Dig Site Pendant, but maybe I'll get lucky and get an extra Ruby. But yeah, arbitrarily difficult. That's just because of the multiple players. Alright, uh, Vampire Slayer. I'll show you how to do the safe spot for this one, but Fire Strike just makes it a little faster. Now, I know we don't have our don't have our waterfall quest, but hey, here's your <laughs> here's your darn near 25k attack experience. So for this one, it's gonna be bouncing between Draenor and Varrock. So like Nick was saying earlier with that Wizard's Tower, um, when you have to make your Rune Mysteries walk from Wizard's Tower to Varrock, uh, you might as well be doing your Vampire Slayer steps during it. So anything else there, Nick? I uh, I not that I can think of. Just some good attack experience. Alright, Demon Slayer. This is another quest that gives you some kudos. Silver Light's probably not going to be too useful. You know, we can't go to Great Karend, so we can't get an Arc Light. But, uh, you know, it's worth the quest points, it's worth the kudos. Um, 25 Bones might take you a little while to get on a fresh account, but just killing stuff in the Lumbridge Swamp on your way back and forth from, you know, doing Restless Ghost, all your walking in between places. Shouldn't take too long, just kill some rats and stuff in your Lumbridge Swamp journeys. And I'm not sure how accurate this is, but uh, recently I was uh, testing out and I was doing Demon Slayer on a like a level 7 account. And I killed one of the mages and it did not actually respawn. Um, oh, the ones and then inside I the circle? Yeah, and then yeah, I, I don't left. think they do. Yeah, so w what I actually did is I killed the lower level mages inside the circle, left, 
And when I returned, the higher one was not there anymore. So that might be an easy way to complete the quest if uh, that was actually working as intended. <laughs> it's such an old quest, I wouldn't doubt there's a little bit of buggy interaction like that. But yeah, um, you can leave the instance if one of the high-level mages aggroes you, but you can do this quest at a really low level. You just gotta be careful about the mages hitting you for <laughs> everyone's seen their friends die, or tricked them into dying on their first walk to Barak. Remember to uh, write down your uh, the phrase that the ah, uh, gypsy yes. gives you. Your uh, incantation. Yeah, because uh, you might not need to go back to her, uh, depending on the route you take, you might not pass her. Um, so that could save some time instead of having to walk back. All right, here we got the Shield of Arav quest. Now the nice thing is, how many people are here talking on this video? There's two of us, so find yourself a friend so you can get this quest done as fast as possible. Because look at those alternative rewards. Uh, not only do you get kudos for this quest as well, but a 1000 experience lamp and a skill above 20. So that's valuable, right? That's actually 5000 experience. Um, so, I had a little theory earlier, but uh, we probably can work around that with birdhouses, but uh, if you use that 1000 XP lamp on top of your 1000 XP for Hunter, you can get to level 27, so if you don't go the increased level route, you might still be able to get yourself some barehanded baby implings. Kinda sounded weird saying that, barehanded baby implings. <laughs> um, but yeah, 600 coins. Uh, 1000 XP lamp. No reason not to do this if you can find someone to do it with. All right, go on to our red one. Yeah. Uh, if you go... Uh, that Gertrude's cat one, I wanted to uh, clarify. I don't think there is a way to get a rod in Mistelin, um, but I believe you can still get sardines in Fossil Island with the fish bowl, the bowl of fish. So All that... Right. Uh, well... We'll have to research that when that, we get back to That you might guys. not be one where it's easy to complete, but it should be one that we can actually complete. Um, so uh, we'll have to get back to you on that one, but it uh, does not look right now like there's a ride that I saw in this lind, but the bull of fish would be an alternative. I could be wrong. Well, here's a soul's bane. Not a very important quest. It's not a requirement for a lot of other things, but uh, this one has probably the hardest combat you'll be looking at for your Misthalin area quests. Um, you're probably going to want an anti-poison, especially if you're a lower level. It's low poison damage, but it'll stack up. Um, but it's it's some decent experience. 500 defense, 500 HP. Multiply those by 5. Not too bad. Not a lot other to, other to talk about here, though. Uh, you can go back down and fight stuff in there, but it's not your best XP rates, so... Really, it's just for the experience and the quest points. And lastly, I do not think we're going to be able to do this unless they hand us a Pestle and Mortar. But it doesn't sound like they're going to be doing that, because I think they want us to have to open up an area that has one and make it kind of enticing that way. Look at that crazy amount of mining experience if we do do it. Um, stats required, you do actually need 10 agility, but we start with 10 agility, so I didn't, I didn't include that on the requirements, because everyone should have it, but... There's your list of items required. A lot of those, with the exception of Vile, Tinderbox, Pestle, and Mortar, a lot of those you can get during the quest, but some of them are kind of an RNG roll. So uh, you're probably going to want to collect as much of that as possible before you go over there. Charcoal, I think you'll have to get from panning. Opal, I think you'll have to get from panning. But please, oh please, get your ropes from Ned. Do not walk on over and try and get your ropes pickpocketing the workmen. That's a terrible idea. Uh, the alternative rewards. Uh, 50 more kudos. Even more important, that dig site pendant. Let's start getting our quick teleports out of the way early, right? And the last reward is a fruit blast. If you take your level 3 certificate over to the museum curator, you're actually able to choose between a fruit blast and I think it's a chocolate cake. Um, you should already get a chocolate cake from Gertrude's cat though, so we're gonna want that fruit blast. Uh, I don't know how early we're going to be able to do Recipe for Disaster because you need a green menzale, which is the only reason it wasn't really on this list, because we have no way of getting that. So we can get the Fruit Blast, but we can't get the green menzale yet. Otherwise, that's it for our list of quests for the uh, limited knowledge we have so far. Anything else you want to throw out there, Nick? Um, nothing quest related. We'll have uh, videos and other things uh, coming uh, soon too though. Uh, so look out for those.
Yeah, expect a couple more. And then anytime there's new information, JGX sends out our way. Expect some more on that front. All right, I hope you're, I hope you're stoked for this like we are. See you guys in a future video.